Unveiling the Bantu Truth, Decoding History, Language, and Culture Part 2 Mikhail Masa Film After a thorough examination and research, going through books after books on this matter, it is safe to say that they unlike the Nilotes, also known as the Nilohamites or Nilo-Saharan who are clearly descendants of Ham, the Niger-Congo family is the progenitor of the descendants of Shem, but let's break it down further. All the indigenous population of the entire world were originally black, it is safe to say that both Ham, Shem and Japheth were black. Ham had four sons, Cush, Phut, Mizraim and Canaan. The original Kushites are the dark-skinned population predominantly found in East Africa today, the Nilotic family is divided into two branches, the darker and tall modern-day Sudanic tribes are the descendants of Kush, predominantly the Luos, the Dinka, the Nuer, the Mandika and others. The descendants of the great Nimrod, these are the same people whom Isaiah 18 warned, a people tall and smooth-skinned, a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers, dwelling along the rivers of Kush, and the second branch is the East African Nilotes, predominantly the Tutsis, Maasai, Aramo, Turkana and many other relatives, also originally dark-skinned Nilotic tribes. These are original Egyptians descendants of Mizraim predominantly found in Eastern Africa with a small minority in West Africa. The original Futites are still the dark-skinned people in Northern Africa, in exception of Berbers and Tuareg, these include some original. Dark-skinned tribes of Libya, Tunisia, Morocco, Mauritania, Algeria, and Ethiopia. There's also a large portion of land in Somalia called Puntland, Punt or Put. Then the original Canaanites are predominantly living together with Bantu, the so-called indigenous population of sub-Saharan Africa, so-called Pygmies. The Pygmies are divided into few groups, the TWA, the Khoikhoi and the Khoisan, etc. Japheth had many sons, him and his descendants were all originally black people just like the original population of the entire world, but because they lived in the north as per the Book of Jubilees, most of his descendants were whited out by the seed of the fallen, Japheth descendants are currently known as the aboriginal, black, population in Europe, Asia, America, and the Big Five Islands as spoken in scriptures including indigenous Australia, black Asians, American Indians, the indigenous population of South America, and other indigenous populations in Pacific Islands, only a small minority. Shem had many children, among the men is Elam, Asher, Arfaxad, Lud and Aram, they were the original black Shemitic population and each had descendants of their own, Hebrews comes from Eber, grandson of Arfaxad a Shemite. Peleg and Joktan are the known sons of Eber and the original Hebrews, Abram comes from the lineage of Peleg and between them are seven generations each with multiple relatives of Shemitic Hebrews Genesis 10, 11, the descendants of Abraham are all Shemitic Hebrews as well. Including The descendants of Ismael, Jacob and his two sons Isaac and Esau. Jacob also known as Israel inherited the land of Canaan, which is most of sub-Saharan Africa, and is today known as the Bantu lineage beyond the rivers of Cush and scattered throughout the world, many people want to be Shemitic Hebrew Israelites, aka Bantu because they simply share a certain similarities with them, most don't realize that the Shemitic lineage is long and wide, and that even the Hebrew lineage is also large, mainly the Hebrews, because remember in Genesis 22 verses 15 to 18 the Bible speaks about the descendants of Abraham being multiplied and blessed to be as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore, an important fact which most people tend to overlook, the fact that Abraham had eight sons, Hebrews, and through them came eight completely different Hebrew bloodlines and possibly eight completely different versions of Hebrew languages, from the original Hebrew, the question is why no one wants to talk about this? Why all of a sudden everyone wants to be Bantu, Israelites? Where are all these descendants of Abraham? And where are all the descendants of the eight sons of Shem? The answer is simpler than you'd think, but some people will not like it because they mostly clouded by emotions, all the original Shemitic tribes and Shemitic Hebrew tribes are found in Africa today, except the descendants of slaves scattered in diaspora, they are predominantly the area known today as Sub-Saharan Africa, many Sub-Saharan African tribes share some similarities with the Bantu, some even speak about their similarities to Bantu languages because they are either Shemitic, Hebrews, or simply Hamitic dwelling with the Bantu, i.e. the Nilohamites, Tutsis, and the Pygmies, Canaanites. West Africa has a high population of Shemites, Hebrews, including but not limited to the original Ismaelites and Edomites and so forth, and some remnants of the Egyptians, Mizraim, but only Bantu living among them are. Israelites
Note this, among the original Shemites and Hebrews, only Jacob, Israelites, inherited the Abraham promise, only Banta branch of Africa and scattered throughout the world have been proven culturally, spirituality, historically, linguistically and even backed up with science to be the covenant and biblical people. The Book of Jubilees says that Japheth was given the northern part of earth and the five big islands for inheritance, Jubilees 8 hours 25 minutes and 30 seconds, the Bible describes it as the coldest part of the earth, modern-day Europe, America and Asia and all the big islands, the same land which Satan and his angels were casted to, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. Isaiah 14 verse 13. Ham was given the hottest part of the earth, Jubilees 22 24, the hottest part of the world is Middle East and all of Northern Africa, and Shem was given the middle of the earth, a not so hot and not so cold part of the world, which is the vast land below the Sahara. From West Africa all the way to Southern Africa, Jubilees 8 12, note that Congo is called the center of the earth and the heart of Africa because it is smack bang in the middle of the entire world with the equator line cutting right through it into two almost equal parts. The Bible says Canaan was cursed once for the sin of his father Ham Genesis 9 verse 27, he was cursed the second time for stealing a vast portion of the land given to Shem as per Jubilees 7,1-14 and Jubilees 10,29-34. This clearly clarifies that the so-called land of Canaan was never really his. Canaan was cursed twice to be a servant of servants, and his descendants are minority as they only remained in small numbers spared by the hand of the Bantu who took over the land of their inheritance. The descendants of Canaan today are the Pygmies branches currently living in sub-Saharan Africa among the Bantu, there is much evidence that the Pygmies were already in sub-Saharan Africa before the Bantu migrated back to sub-Saharan Africa from Egypt. It is also said that Pygmies are part of the Founding fathers of the earliest Egyptian civilization, historians also recorded that at some point in time Europe had a pygmy negroid population. Until they wiped them out. After the exodus from Egypt, the Israelites, the so-called Bantu went back in the land of their promise, beyond the rivers of Kush, so-called sub-Saharan Africa where they are found in majority today, right around the equator line all the way south. This vast beautiful land was promised by the Most High only to the Israelites, Genesis 13 and 14. The Shemites and Hebrews from other lineages different from Banta slash Israelites are still found in sub-Saharan Africa today, predominantly in West and Central Africa, the most notable are the Yorubas and the Ebos, being the descendants of Abraham from his second Egyptian wife Keturah, Genesis 25, all of whom Abraham sent away with their mothers to keep them away from Isaac's promise and to preserve his pure bloodline through Sarah, and the simplest explanation why the Ebo and Yoruba cultures have such a significant Egyptian influence. Some Ebos claim their ancestor was called Ari, people have recently started connecting the Ebo mythical Ari with the Ari son of Gad, but this is still far-fetched, and if this was true then his descendants, in exclusion of all the Ebo, would be Israelites. Because according to Ebo history, Ari was the first settler and founder of the modern-day eastern area of Nigeria, but this Ari was simply the founder of the area, not necessarily an Ebo as Ebos were among some of the population around there, interestingly enough. The same area is said to be a homeland to some Banta tribes who migrated through West Africa, Ebos oral history of migration from Egypt still contradicts this theory as it happened long before the Israelites slash Banta left Egypt, and Noteworthy both the Ebos and Yoruba believe they predate the Bantu, they even believe themselves to be Egyptians, and matter of fact, the Ebo and Yoruba languages are a lot similar to ancient Egyptian language, but nevertheless, Ebo and Yoruba are have an undeniable Hebraic origin as well, but until the Ari branch of the Ebo claim a Bantoid ancestry, we cannot make them one. The Fulanis and the Wolof are among the original Assyrians, from Ashur son of Shem, they had a significant admixture with the Kushites and the Egyptians. The Hausa, Tuareg and Berbers are among the Hebrews from the lineage of Ismael, son of Abraham's Egyptian wife Hagar, and the Idoma, the Wida Hawida, and all the Akan tribes are the only original Hebraic remnants of Esau son of Isaac and brother of Jacob. Genesis 36 verses 27-32, and the country of Ghana was named after one of the wives of Esau, Anna, Genesis 36 verses 2-12, notice the name Ada or Adego, Adiz, Adiba, Adiku, etc. 
This name Ada is mostly common in West Africa than elsewhere today, mainly by Igbo people, also the Idoma are predominantly Nigerians while the Akan live in the area of modern-day Ghana, other descendants of Esau were whited out, these remnant of Esau, mainly the Akan tribes and Wida, Wida of Benin were tremendously involved in the transatlantic slavery, selling Bantu, mainly, and other West African Hebrews, some people are trying too hard to associate the name Akan with Akan in the Bible who's from the lineage of Judah, they don't realize that Akan and all his descendants were stoned to death and burned for disobedience. Joshua 7. The Nubian tribes found in Northeast Africa are Hamitic, mainly from the lineage of Mizraim and a small minority from Cush. I mentioned early that there are also a remnant of the Israelites still in West Africa, but a tiny minority. These includes the Fong, Basa, Sawabantu, Bible, Makah, Beidi, Bam, Mananguba, Bafia, Beidi, and Jerawan. Bantu believe their ancestral homeland to be Congo, sub-Saharan African, the land not so cold and not so hot, the richest land flowing with milk and honey, not West Africa, many Bantu believe they migrated to Egypt and only came back during Exodus time. This is backed up by many scholars and Bantu leaders. In many Bantu traditions they believe in a migration from Egypt into the areas they are settling now. They believe to have crossed the Nile River into sub-Saharan Africa. Some just say to have come from the north. This is also relevant considering North Africa is where all the old civilizations took place including Babylonia in northeast and Assyria, Ashur, in the west thereof, which also explains both their Egyptian, Babylonian and Assyrian captivities. King Bungain of southern Africa himself testified that our oral history explains this clearly, he said Bantu comes originally from Congo, he also said that after the out-of-Egypt migration many Bantu went through Ethiopia and settled there for a bit before migrating to sub-Saharan Africa. This easily explains the fact that Shem was originally sub-Saharan African, and later found himself in Egypt while Canaan the cursed occupied his land, but when the Bantu returned home to the land given back to them by the Most High they took over all of sub-Saharan Africa today, and after Egypt was in the hand of the seed of the fallen, many inhabitants including the indigenous population, the so-called Nilotes massively started migrating south, these same people later helped the seed of the fallen enslave the Bantu through the Arab and transatlantic slavery. Thinking out loud, have you ever wondered why the first slave ship and the last slave ship are all recorded to have been transporting Bantu people? Also, do you know why West Africa has more slave dungeons than any other part of the continent and why the population of Bantu in that area decreased immensely at the beginning of slavery? Have you ever wondered why colonialism was remarkably harsh and mass killing people in mainly Bantu nations than other African nations? For instance, in Congo by Belgium, in Angola by Portugal, in Kenya by Britain, in Namibia by Germany, in Zimbabwe by Britain, in South Africa by Dutch and Britain, in Rwanda slash Burundi by Portugal, Belgium and Tutsis, and the list could go on. If you know about the preferences of Bantu slaves during the Arab slash Indian Ocean slavery as the people of the Holy Book, and the demand for Bantu slaves during the transatlantic slavery, then you will understand what I mean, the fact is that Europeans and Arabs captured Bantu themselves, but native Africans, mainly West African kingdoms were involved in the capturing process of people from Bantu tribes because many considered them a threat. This is not about preaching hate among black people, but simply pointing out facts to help shade light into history and create a clear path for all. Ban to the Israelites scattered throughout the world, you have to know that we are living in a world of duality, and the seed of the fallen would to anything to duplicate the original people as they have done so throughout the world, you have to know the difference between Israelites and Israelis. Judah and Jews or Shemitic and Semitic, scriptures says Satan turned himself into an angel of light and wanted. To be like God, scriptures also say the seed of the fallen would try to put graven images of themselves in the Bible as they have done, but scriptures also say that we shall know them by their fruits. The so-called Jewish people are a religious groups inspired by the seed of the fallen who at some point in time had access to Banta spirituality with intent to assume it as their own and to destroy the true biblical Israelites as said in Psalm 83, these impostors call themselves Jews, they include but not limited to Ashkenazi Jews, Sephardic Jews, Mizrahi Jews, Ethiopian Jews, Falasha Jews, Abiodia Jews, Igbo Jews, Yoruba Jews, and even Lemba Jews. These are simply Jewish communities converts to Judaism religion all around the world who have nothing with the covenant but are all part of the great deception. Israelites are a bloodline, it's in their NDA, their culture and language, Lemba are pure Bantu but have associated themselves with the imposters and learning stranger languages. 
not realizing it's a new form of Western colonialism. Bantu are not represented by stars in the sky, nor by moon or sun, we do not abide by the cross, stone, nor the ankh, we do not bow to any principalities. If you are Bantu and have been looking to learn Paleo Hebrew, don't look further, your Bantu languages and the Paleo Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, are one and the same. The modern Hebrew, also known as Yiddish was invented from plagiarized Kikongo slash Banta languages, here are some similarities, notice how Banta languages stand out from other African and non-African languages.